Welcome to an out of the box playthrough video. Today I am looking at Kaldor's Grip. This is a game by Greg Jewell. This is print and play. Um, I got my copy from Board Game Geek from the file section, but it is also available for download from P PMP Arcade Online.com. So this is a card game. Um, the interesting thing about this particular card game is it's 18 cards and you play it all in your hand. So you don't play anything out on the, um, the table. Um, there is also a rule book. I printed the, there's a two pager that you can, um, has all the rules on it in two pages. The way that the game plays is that you flip, you flip cards over every turn and you follow the instructions. The game itself has fabulous art on the cards. And the general makeup of the cards are that they have, um, set of values on one side and often the cards have rotation on them so you rotate them as you move them through the deck so every time you play play a turn you basically flip a card um, and in this case it was a it's a bad card um, that would say i would have to then take the top four cards and put them to the bottom of the deck so i'll take one two three four and then i'll flip the next card and then you follow the instructions and so this card would allow me to either flip it so I could rotate this card and I could either flip two cards or rotate it and take five cards. And as you play through the game, you flip over cards and you're going for a win condition. So the win condition is that you have the four binding stones um, up, face up, and then you can get Goldil's grip. And then you win the game and there's a scoring mechanism as well. There's these figments of imagination, figments of forgot. Um, and they get flipped over as well. And if one of them is ever face up in the, the, guard, the card game, that's it, game over. And so it becomes a bit of a memory management game. Um, you can flick, flick through the deck at any time to make a decision on what you're going to flip over um, and how um, things work. To a certain degree, the best thing to probably do is to um, play a game and you can see how it pans out. So first of all, you give it a shuffle. The thing I like about it is it's all in your hand, so you can pretty much do it anywhere. It'd be great for a, like on a bus, in a plane, and you don't need any table space because it is all done in your hand. It's either rotating cards or looking through them. So we start with flipping a card, and we get a bad one. So this is a figment of Farragut, and it says, if this card is already face up, lose the game. So if we see that one again, that's game over. Because it's got a one, means we have to put one card, including itself, on the bottom of the deck and start our next turn okay this one says if the sum of all the cards moving to the bottom of the deck is 13 or higher rotate it and we'd want to rotate it because that's a scoring value of three and so until we rotate it it has no scoring value for the end and there's a sure I said there's a chart at the end of scoring um, that you can get through to the end so because I can't rotate it because I have nothing else um, moving um, I have to do three cards. So one, two, three. When I move the three cards, the top card I could put anywhere in, or, in any order if I thought that was going to make a difference. As it is, I'll just flip them under. And see the next card. Archives of Erebus. When the sum of the adjacent cards is seven, you can rotate it. And again, um, I haven't got any more cards exposed. If I had seven, I could flip it, and that would get me a four score at the end, gaining more knowledge. As it is, I have four cards, two, three, four, and under they go. But the next one, the Beast Sanctum. If exactly three cards in the deck have a value of six, not a star gains six knowledge. So that's the final scoring. So that's not really of interest to me. What I can do is I can either cycle six cards or I can rotate and cycle one. And we can look through our deck at any time. Um, there's no problem with that before we make our decision. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I could do that. A big chunk of them goes. I think I'm going to rotate it and just do one. Because I want to expose cards because I need the binding stones. Oh, didn't want that. So there's another nasty. I have to do four. One, two, three, four. There's, yeah, one, two, three, four. And there we go. And flop. Uh, deep Roots, you may rotate any other eligible cards moving to the bottom of the deck. So I have to do three, 
or four. I think I'll go for three. Um, like I say there, you may rotate any other cards, so it doesn't help me. I'll just put them under. Let's see. Ferragot's Fortress. So this one is rotate any figment of Ferragot in the deck that has the lowest value. If all five have been rotated, you lose the game. So it's the lowest value. So there's a one, there's a four. So he will rotate. Okay, and that's only a one, which is fine. I hope. I'll flip this one. Okay, so this is one of my binding stones, which is great, because I need to get four of those before I can get to the end condition and try and win the game. Um, I can rotate these, but you get more points if the binding stones are all of the same rotation at the end. So I can either take a four, one, two, three, four, which would be fine. So I'll take a four. So we're trying to reveal cards, um, and that's going to give us more options. Frenzy Flame. So this one has a star. Um, so I can take any value from 1 to 6. So it's basically a wild card. You must rotate this card and then move it to any random spot in the deck. That's fine, but I have to pick a value first. Um, I think I'm going to pick 1 just to get rid of that top card so I can expose it. So it's going to rotate. We stick it somewhere randomly. I picked a 1 so that will go under. And flip a card. Ooh, another nasty. So I have to do 3 cards. Okay. So I had no choice there. So this one now um, has no text because I've already rotated it. So I can either take it for a one, which I don't want to do because that would be game over. So I have to rotate it and then take a six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's not too bad. And we'll flip that. Okay, so this is the end game, end game card. I can only score that when I've got the four binding stones and I think I've only got one so far. One. One, yep. So now I can pick any number because it's got a wild card, so that's pretty cool. Um I think I'm gonna go with a two because I wanna withdraw I wanna um expose this one because it could be a binding stone. But it's not. Maleficent Maze, you may rearrange the order of all the cards moving to the bottom of the deck. Okay, and I've got five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. I'll leave that. It's fine. And then let's flip this one. Oh, good binding stone. Excellent. Um, okay, so that's pretty good too. So I'm going to take the one means this one will activate. It says when the sum of all adjacent cards is seven, rotate this card. So I've got a three and a five. So I can rotate that card. It means I've got a scoring value and now I've got a, a wild card, which I can then say I'm gonna take a two, put those two over, and I'll flip this one. Another binding stone. One, two, three would be bad. So I guess I'm gonna have to flip it. Cause I need a four, cause I don't wanna in the game, one, two, three, four, and we get, oh, okay, so I can't do much with that, but I have to take the two, one, two, which isn't too bad, flip this one, oh, this is a five, one, two, three, four, five, okay, so now we've got the fortress, which means I rotate the card with the lowest value, so what have we got, we've got one, it's already flipped, so it's a three, four, and a two. So it's going to be the two. So we take that. And then we either have a one or six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can't have the six, so I'll lose the game. So I have to take the one. Um, I don't want to rotate this. So either take a four, one, two, three, four, which would be fine. Or three, one, two, three. I'll take the four. Took the four is fine. Now this is my scoring card. It's a wild card, which is handy. So I want one, two, three. I'll get rid of three. I pick a three because I want to get that one exposed. Ah, failed star. Gain knowledge. I may have had two. It will be game over. Or I can rotate it for a five. One, two, three, four, five. 
I think I'm dead. So I pick the standard card value, it's a two, which would mean this one. It says if this card is face up, lose the game. If I rotate it and take the five, one, two, three, four, five, I get another one. If this card is already face up, you lose the game. So I've lost. Getting there further than I've got previously. Um, so what do I end up with? I ended up with one, two, three, four. So that must be the last one here. So there you go. That was a, so then with, to reset it, you basically have to rotate all your cards back to your standard rotation, which is really easy with the card backs. Again, awesome art. Um, and then they're all good to go. You give it a shuffle and um, play it again. And that is um, Gold of the Brook. Really nice, really quick. Um, harder than it looks. And I think there's also an expansion that I haven't built. Um, I'm kind of excited about that. So I think I'll do that over the week, um, during the week. Um, yeah, download and build it. I, by the way, how I built it is I just printed it cut the corners and then I'll just put a magic card underneath, glue the magic card to give it a bit of backing and then I'll stick it in a standard card sleeve. So really easy build, 18 cards, great little game. Don't forget to subscribe and like.